e-commerce lies that are holding you back. The thing is with these lies, they get into your mind extremely easily. You're at a conference like this, and a speaker, not me because I don't lie, obviously, a speaker says something, a simple sentence, it gets into your brain and it sticks there. Or you're reading a magazine, or you're talking to fellow entrepreneurs. It's just something simple. It gets into your brain and it sticks there. You don't even realize it's happening. So I'm going to look at a few lies on a meta level and try to give you a practical example as well. Um, because they're holding you back, because they're unconsciously, they're costing you mental time, they're costing you money, they're costing you um, all kinds of things. And the best thing is to just realize that you believe in these lies and then kill them, kill them with fire. So I have a great first example, and that's the I don't need lie. It works all kinds of ways, and the, uh, one of the practical examples I can give you for the I don't need lie is web statistics. And there are still people which tell me, I want a bit of advice, but I won't uh, give you my statistics because I have none. I don't look at statistics myself, so I don't need them, so I'm not collecting them. And even if people have statistics installed on their site, they might not have uh, spent any time on configuring them correctly. So that's the second, uh, the second level in which web statistics are not implemented correctly. And because people think, okay, if I have it, if I just install Google Analytics, it's enough. Um, I don't need it because I'm not looking at it myself. But the thing is, for example, with web statistics, that you don't realize you need it uh, in the future. You might not need it now, you might not look at it yourself. But as soon as your business starts growing, and you're um, asking experts and specialists, conversion rate optimizer, web analytics specialist, to come and look at your business, or a designer which doesn't just design, but also wants to know what the effect of his design is, those people are going to start asking for statistics. So you might believe in the lie that I don't need this now, but uh, you will need these things in the future. And especially uh, the things where, which are seen as best practices or which are said to uh, be, should be implemented by everybody, by every store owner. Uh, every time you hear something like that and you think, oh, I don't need that, reconsider and really think, is this a lie? Is this, uh, am I thinking that I shouldn't implement this because it's going to cost me time or money? But well, you actually should. Another, uh, another lie is prepare for everything. Because the thing you want to do, and which I can applaud, is dream and dream big. Everybody does that, it's what makes us human. But that's okay, you can dream big. But the problem is that you're going to start preparing for that ginormous dream which you have in your mind. I will hit a million dollars with this new product in the first month. And if you start preparing for dreams like that without actually having proof that it's even going to be remotely in that area, it's going to cost you money and it's going to cost you time. You'll buy uh, expensive warehouse software, you'll decide that you can't have this product in your existing uh, warehouse or in your attic even, you need to outsource it to somewhere else. You're going to start preparing for things which you don't even know are going to happen. And you can't prepare for uh, things that you don't see coming. So. What you can do is you have to find a balance and what you can do to find that balance is put proof against that dream. So keep on dreaming, that's okay, but do you have any proof at all that a part of that dream is reality? And if that dream is this big and you start putting proof against it, it automatically becomes smaller and what you get in the end is a little bit of reality and reality or something, something that looks like it's really going to happen, that is what you can prepare for. You're no longer over preparing, you're preparing for things which you have found proof for. And um, if you go from this dream, which you cannot prepare for, to the reality, which you are, you can prepare for, try to prepare for, then you're already saving so much time and energy that you can spend your, the other energy on uh, opportunities which actually exist and might come uh, in the future. Then the opposite of I don't need is, of course, I need. And every time that you hear yourself in a conversation with uh, uh, competitors or customers or anybody else in the e-commerce sphere at this conference, if you hear yourself saying, I need, I want you to picture yourself as a toddler, repeating that sentence as a toddler. I need, I need, I need, I need. I need a one-page checkout. I need this. I need that. And um, it sounds ridiculous. And that's the, that's the, that's the entire idea of this, of this training, that you realize how ridiculous it is. Because a lot of the times when you say, I need, I need that design, I need that way of generating a coupon, um, it's actually a want. And needs are expensive because you really need to implement them. But there's one thing more expensive than a need. That's a want that looks like a need because you actually don't uh, need that certain thing. I'll give you an example. Uh, years ago, um, people did a lot of research and realized that a one-page checkout, 
so payments and shipping and confirmation, everything on one page, was a lot more effective than a multi-page checkout. And at that time, a lot of e-commerce systems didn't have a one-page checkout. It was technically difficult to get the payments and shipping and everything on one page. So a lot of people started spending a lot of money on converting their multi-page checkout to a one-page checkout. And then a year later, some new research came out that said that an optimized multi-page checkout was just as effective as a one-page checkout. And that's a great example of where everybody thought I need, because the magazines and the conferences and everybody was talking about one-page checkouts and everybody thought, I need that as well, spending money and time trying to create that. And then just a few months later, the, the, the new research came out and said, well, if you have a good multi-page checkout, it's actually a want and not a need. And it could save you a lot of money if you recognize the difference between a need and a want. Then I'm boring. I'm boring, my business is boring, uh, my product is boring, and that's why I don't have to do this or that or that. One of the first things that gets a lot of damage when people believe their business or their company or their product is boring uh, is marketing or email marketing. Um, a practical example would be that people say, I don't do email marketing because I'm too boring for that. I don't have anything interesting to tell my customers. I sell toilet paper. What am I going to do? So I'm boring. I'm not going to do that. And you know, it's fun. It's fun to have a discussion about whether your company is actually boring, but I won't win that discussion. Uh, not from stage anyway. So we're going to put this to vote to your customers. I'm not going to convince you that you're not boring and you should be doing certain things. Anytime you, you think, you believe in the lie, I'm boring, and that's why I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do email marketing, let your customers decide. So in the case of email marketing, for example, head on over to WooThemes, get a plugin which integrates MailChimp or any other email marketing provider, and put that checkbox on your check, uh, checkout if you don't have it already. Put it more prominently, add a widget. Um, I want to subscribe to your newsletter and let your customers vote. So it's not going to be your word against mine. We're going to let your customers decide. And every time your customer checks that box, I want to subscribe to a newsletter, you buy me a beer. And every time that, uh, and in, if in 12 months from now you still have zero subscribers, I'll buy you a beer. It's okay. But probably there will be, if people are purchasing your products, they do believe that you're not completely boring and they will be subscribing and don't decide for your customers whether you're too boring to do something like email marketing or Facebook advertising or Twitter. Let your customers decide. Don't believe the lie yourself. I'm special. And you would think that if somebody, if somebody says, my company is boring, my product is boring, uh, that they will not say, I'm also special, but they actually will. These are lies, they don't have to be logical. People can even say it in the same sentence. Oh, my company is so boring, my, I'm selling toilet paper. I'm, it's so boring, I don't do email marketing, but it's because my customers are special, they want toilet paper, they don't email, the, my customers don't use email. So it's, it's a lie, come on, it doesn't have to be logical. So you'll get, I'm boring and special in the same sentence, in the same conversation, and I'll give you an example of I'm special, because this is actually a pretty hard lie to, to find and to, uh, to realize. Um, this is one, it's, my, it's uh, one of my own examples. And it took me years to find out that I was believing this lie. So years ago, I started selling my first product. I had a, a, a software product and everybody told me, use PayPal as a, payment, uh, as a payment system, use PayPal. All my international friends said that. So I thought, okay, everybody's doing PayPal, all the cool kids, I'll put PayPal on my site. I also added uh, some, uh, some Dutch payment method, which nobody out of, the, the, out, of, out of the Netherlands knows. And to my surprise, 90 plus percent of my customers were using Ideal, this Dutch payment method. But my friends, my international friends were saying, no, everybody's using PayPal. So I thought, I'm special. I'm special, my customers are special. You guys, you're normal and I'm special because my customers use Ideal. And I will take PayPal off my website. It's more expensive than the, this local payment method. And I will never put it back up because I'm special. And then we're uh, now six years uh, later and because I'm lazy and I forgot, I didn't take PayPal off. And I noticed six months ago that it completely turned around. PayPal did something, apparently. And now 90 plus percent of my customers are actually using PayPal. So if I would have believed that I was special and, would, uh, and, and then kept that lie in my mind and still think I was special to this day, I would have a problem because the majority of my customers now have the preference to use PayPal instead of Ideal. And that's just one example of how you could believe you're special for whatever reason and then act upon that idea 
which doesn't have, it could be temporarily, that you're temporarily special, it doesn't have to stick around. So anytime you, um, anytime you hear yourself saying things like, I'm not going to implement this, or I'm not going to do that because I'm special, I need, I don't need, etc., really reconsider, is this an e-commerce lie that I've read somewhere in a magazine which doesn't apply to me, and could I save myself time if I stop believing in that lie? So I'm giving you some homework. It's a kind of a creepy image, I know. <laughs> I wanted to switch it out, but hey, <laughs> creepy is also good. Um, I'm going to give you some homework. So you have projects right now, your developer, your designer, you yourself, you're building a spreadsheet maybe, and they might have been based on a lie, something you've read somewhere in the past. So make a list of those projects. You can do it in a, if there's a quiet moment today or you can do it when you get to home. Make a list of all the active projects which are really costing you energy and then consider what was the motivation, what was the idea, the background for me to actually start investing time in this project and consider based on these lies or any other lies you can think of yourself, could this have been a lie? Could, I, could it be possible that one of the improvements I'm doing to my website is based on something I read somewhere but really doesn't apply to me? And if you can find two or three projects which you just throw into the trash, uh, trash can because you uh, realize they're a lie, you're saving yourself a lot of time, you're opening up uh, time and space and money to focus on something that might actually make a difference. So um, that's my talk. I hope you, uh, you can find a few things in your projects which you can, uh, well, kill with fire and then focus on something that really makes a difference. Thank you.